Hey there Cosmic Warriors and welcome back to another video and if you are new here my name is Hannah I'm a Western Practical Astrologer so we're here today we're going to talk about this upcoming full moon in the sign of Scorpio happening on the 23rd of April yes uh, we're coming away from eclipse season <laughs> How are we feeling about it? How are you doing today? I hope you are doing well. Um, and we're coming up to the weekend. We're actually coming up to this mighty Jupiter Uranus conjunction over the weekend. So are you excited about that? Are you a little bit apprehensive? <laughs> What's going on for you based on your own experiences, your own chart? Let me know. Feel free to share. Okay, so I am going to present this presentation to you today full moon in scorpio here we go it's going to be tourist season uh starting from tomorrow yes we're coming into a new season a new astrological season cannot believe it of course every season went by so quick uh yeah and this, of course, is the first sort of full moon um, after uh, eclipse season. Well, it's just it's not going to be an eclipse, <laughs> but it's still going to be intense because it's in Scorpio. All right. So just to let you know that I do have some astrology products available. If you are interested, you can find them over at hannaselsworld.com. You can find the um, 2024 calendar, guides, cheat sheets, ebooks merch all that good stuff all the links to these products will be in the description box down below and i do want to say thank you so so much to my patrons over at patreon for all of your support and if you do wish to gain access to new astrology content early you can join the patreon of course uh, there's a new series that's coming you can find out all about it by joining the patreon i'm very excited about it uh, but you can also gain access to daily forecasts over there. So if you want to keep up to date with the astrology, I actually kind of enjoy doing those because it sort of makes me think of myself in terms of drinking my morning coffee and just reading a little, you know, a little update for each day, each morning. It can sort of become a part of your, your routine, your morning routine. I'm all about that with the, the Virgo energy in my chart. And also PDF guides are available over at the Patreon Rightio. So here we go. Here is an overview of the different aspects that we're going to be exploring today. So if we look here, this moon is going to be at four degrees in Scorpio. We've got the sun then, of course, opposite in Taurus. The sun and moon are always going to be opposite of each, of, of each other during a full moon. And basically, we enter Taurus season and then boom, full moon in Scorpio, hello. And the other interesting thing I want to mention about this, of course, is that Pluto is going to be a significant key player. Not only is Pluto one of the dispositors of the moon, Pluto is also creating squares to both the sun and moon. So we've got a fixed T square in the sky during this full moon. So we're going to get into that. Plus, when we do search for the dispositor, so the traditional dispositor here of this full moon, uh, which is Mars. Mars is there. It's still in Pisces. It's also uh, conjunct Neptune as well. Saturn is also hanging out there in Pisces, of course. But the interesting thing about Mars, the position of Mars, is the, the sextile there to Jupiter and Uranus. Um, and what I want to say about this, of course, is this energy is something that is much more potent uh, today. But of course, things are starting to ease slightly as Mars does start to sort of continue along its path. But we're still going to talk about its significance. And we also see here that Jupiter and Uranus are making a trine to... Black Moon Lilith as well. Uh, Jupiter and Black Moon Lilith are actually the same degree. So that's going to be something we're going to touch on. 
Now, if we look to the dispositor of the sun, which is Venus, that is in Aries still. And we've got a conjunction to Chiron. Of course, Venus is starting to ease a little bit from Chiron in this way, but uh, still, there's still going to be a significance. Plus, notice here that Chiron and Ceres are the same degree. So there is a square here between this conjunction of Chiron and Venus and Ceres. And then when we also look over to the other side, notice that Pallas retrograde creates a square to Juno. And if I just move this, also what I find interesting is this sort of crossover, so to speak, between uh, the Earth signs and the water signs. So we've got Moon in Scorpio creating a trine to Vesta in Cancer, but then there's the sextile to Juno in Virgo. But then when we go the other way, Sun in Taurus is trying Juno in Virgo and then sextile uh, Vesta in Cancer. So we're going to look at these aspects today. So four degrees. Four in numerology is a building number. The builder. This actually is my life path number. Uh, fun fact. But yes, the number four carries a vibration with it that says, I'm here to work. I'm here to show up. I'm here to do my time. I'm going to organize. I'm going to plan ahead. There's structure. There is structure. Even look at the very shape of the number four. It looks quite secure in its position. And even thinking about a table, you know, a table that has four legs, it's, it's going to stand up straight. And the other thing I want to mention about this is the number four can be rather rigid, <laughs> rigid, inflexible, sort of stuck in its ways. Very interesting to reflect on this and blend it in with the full moon because well, like I was saying a moment ago, there is a fixed T-square happening during this full moon. And fixed signs can be rigid. <laughs> fixed signs can be inflexible. So there does seem to be something about a, a power dynamic, a power struggle around this full moon. But I also think that this showcases great determination and resilience on our part, which we we're going to touch on because the thing about this full moon is that it's connected to an eclipse that happened in Scorpio. Though another thing I want to mention is the number four, if we think about the degree, okay, the fourth degree in astrology, this is the degree of cancer. <laughs> so with this cancer influence, there also seems to be greater protection to this moon. You know, you think about how the moon rules cancer in astrology, and you think also about how both Scorpio and cancer have their shells. They both can be very protective, somewhat defensive signs as well, especially whenever they feel threatened. Um, so yeah, I feel as if the Cancerian degree further adds to protection, perhaps protecting our emotions, protecting our feelings, right? And then I also want to mention that this full moon occurs within the Scorpio, Scorpio deacon. So adding extra sort of potency, I suppose you could say, to the vibration, to the energy of Scorpio. So again, we're going to get into it. And just to remind you then about full moons, you know, what are they all about? During full moons, what we do is we release, we shed. You sort of think about it as, okay, the moon is full in the sky. It's bright, it's gleaming, it's shining. And there's clarity then, right? It's as if a big, big light is shining on our subconscious. It's shining on our psyche. It's shining on old habits and old patterns. Um, these things are especially pretty prominent given that this is Scorpio that we're talking about. But whenever we see that, 
we can then release, right? We can release from a place of inner knowing. We can release from a place of, okay, I'm aware of that. I recognize that. And I wish to let go of that. But hey, at the same time, this is about reward. This is also about, you know, absorbing, (laughs) I suppose you could say, absorbing that which does serve us and that which we can carry forward with us. That's another thing. So yeah, that is just a reminder about full moons. And of course, emotions can be pretty high. Hello, welcome uh, to Pointer Dog Marketing. Hello to you. This upcoming 2024 full moon in Scorpio is the end of an old career and the start of a new career for you. Oh, wow. Well, I wish you all the best in your new career. You know, I hope um, that it works out really well for you. Ashley, hello, welcome. You said that you're glad, oh, you're glad to catch me live. Yay, well, I'm, I'm glad to have you here. Thank you for being here. And you said that you've been feeling quite anxious. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's an interesting time at the moment with the position of Jupiter and Uranus. And not too long after this conjunction over the weekend, um, we're going to experience this full moon in Scorpio. You know, we're building up to it basically. We, we've passed the we've passed the first quarter phase of the moon, and we're we're well on the way uh, to this this full moon. Oh, so you've got moon in Scorpio. So yeah, yeah, uh, that also makes sense then in terms of how you're starting to personally feel um, in this way. Right. The last thing I want to mention then is the reset, right? There can be like a a reset, if you will, uh, when it comes to full moons, right? Because there is a release, there is a shedding of sorts. Then it's like, okay, I'm recharged. I'm going to reset things and I'm going to move forward. So I just wanted to remind you just of what full moons are all about. So we're going to break this down. Um, Just quickly, I'm going to read, you say, Ashley, that you've got an Aries rising. Okay. So Mars, so there's quite a bit of Mars in in your life in this way, Mars influence. Um, You you haven't been as excited. It it hasn't been as exciting as astrologers have been saying. Mm, Okay. Okay. So things um, for you haven't really been as exciting. Um, hello to High Priestess. Hi, welcome. Glad to have you here. Thank you for joining. All right. So I'm going to break this down. I want you to try and think about, this is why I always recommend when it comes to the phases of the moon. And by the way, I will read your comments just in between slides. But the reason why I suggest journaling during phases of the moon is because then you can sort of get a sense of okay well what intentions did I set around the new moon and how have things come to fruition and what have you learned you know not everything of course comes to fruition if you will we also learn what we want to let go of and what isn't really for us essentially so I want you to especially think back to October of 2022 because there was a new moon solar eclipse in Scorpio at two degrees so if you think about solar eclipses right eclipses are very much uh powerful and significant so they represent these significant new beginnings and shifts shift in perspective so in the sign of Scorpio of course um these matters more so really at two how tenacious we can be, right? There is a, I guess you could say a determination, this grip, like a gripping quality to Scorpio that is most similar to Cancer in, in that it it doesn't want to let go. <laughs> but you kind of mix that in with these very, very strong emotions um, that can go to extremes at times. So you could very well see here significant uh, extreme behaviors, uh, notable emotional uh, changes that have occurred within your Scorpio house since the solar eclipse. 
and maybe you even recognize what you have outgrown and I don't want to say too much about this because these things that I say there's more to come throughout the presentation but yeah that's just sort of one example so yes consider what intentions you set back then and then fast forward to the first quarter moon this was July of 2023 and that was also at two degrees so think back to July of 2023 and and consider okay you set intentions within your Scorpio house October 2022 but those intentions were challenged <laughs> they were challenged around that time um and I suppose when I trying to think about this if the if there was the first quarter moon I'm assuming then the sun um, would have been in Leo at the time I need to double check that but yeah I just I wonder then how your intentions were were challenged back then around that time but hey the thing about this too is they can become strengthened we learn from our challenges in this regard okay so this then is a moon of illuminating intentions set in October 2022 but there was a conjunction to Venus and Scorpio during that eclipse as well hmm interesting to think about right because we're coming up to this time with the conjunction between Jupiter and Uranus and a lot of that has to do with these huge shocks <laughs> and epiphanies regarding our physical security and of course for many of us this can be very uncomfortable um pretty nerve-wracking <laughs> anxiety uh, ridden in this way but for others this can be exciting <laughs> and liberating freeing sort of being able to uplift ourselves into greater states of awareness and to kind of even think about okay new discoveries a new way forward a new path a new vision now it doesn't mean that anything is right or wrong I just want to be clear in that but <laughs> Venus then is a big part of this because Venus rules Taurus so I, I find it interesting that Venus was in Scorpio back then and I sort of feel as if then whilst all of this is starting to unravel over the weekends and coming up to the full moon in Scorpio is it that these matters are related to the very physical security transformations that we embarked on or that we experienced back in October or it's that we're starting to feel the intensity intensity sort of rise and rise and build and build and build and it is interesting to think about because we can sort of see this I think as a collective right you know Uranus is very much about the collective and the well collective consciousness and social change so when we think about this many people are feeling this sort of itch this when is when are things going to change when are things going to improve for me when is it going to get better when is the cost of living going to come down I'm finding it difficult to afford such such and such I can't save I'm, yeah the the stuff to do with our financial situation has just been full of twists and turns uncertainty no real clear answers and of course with the conjunction here over the weekend there could be a few uh different technological changes and advancements that come up um and that's not to say that such technological shifts are welcomed or necessary uh they they might actually do more harm than good to be quite honest with you um but I feel like that depends on our own sort of personal um I suppose you could say financial situation but yet 
it's also this whole thing of, especially where Uranus is concerned, those changes can't really be stopped because they are so much outside of our control, you know, sort of bigger, <laughs> bigger players. Let's just put it that way. Bigger players at play. Um, but hey, when we think about it in a positive light, I mean, Jupiter is about optimism. It is about being positive and trying to look on the brighter side of things. So there could also be, you know, these insights, these revelations where we can, for example, if there are certain technological advancements and shifts, we can get right out in front of it. <laughs> we can kind of take the bull by the horns. No, no pun intended <laughs> with Taurus. No pun intended. But yeah, I think just with the Scorpio influence here, it is sort of highlighting the intensity of this time period and, and coming up to the conjunction and coming up to the full moon, we can feel our own sort of emotions rise and rise and rise. And I find that really interesting, you know, Ashley, that you said that about your own feelings uh, right now with you, especially having your moon in Scorpio. So with this full moon, well, clarity is up ahead. Hey, Wherever Scorpio is, the truth is revealed. The unconscious, you know, we think about the moon and how it's so much about our own sort of unconscious habits and patterns. The moon then being, and it's, it's the full moon, it sort of brings this clarity. It illuminates what is hidden. And so there could be these illuminating qualities to that of our very survival around this time especially thinking about how we join in a financial way with others because of course Scorpio is also about how we share how we share resources how we share our finances even just think about that on a very practical everyday level right you think about if you're married for instance how you share as a couple or if you think about if maybe you were married and you're separated, you're divorced, but you're still, you know, you're paying uh, for child care, for example, you know, uh, you're, you're paying for your, your child, but then your partner is also paying their share, you know, this type of stuff. Okay, so the dispositor of the moon then is in Scorpio and Mars is in Pisces then, and it's conjunct Neptune, sextile Jupiter and Uranus. Mm. So here we see some murky waters here we see very little um how do we say force or very little say in the matter and perhaps feeling out of reach of something perhaps feeling as if the answers that we are really craving it's not so clear and it's not so vivid, right? Mars is sort of moving away more from Saturn and Saturn is more about that structure and that realism and being somewhat practical, but Mars is moving closer to Neptune and Neptune dissolves. So perhaps there is something merging here coming up. There's a merging quality to this time period or Perhaps a lot of it is to do with, with faith and, and guidance and trust. I feel like trust is a big, it's actually a big, big part of what Pisces is about and Neptune especially being there in Pisces. So Mars then being the dispositor of this moon in Scorpio, I feel highlights just this energetic trust. And perhaps even thinking about stillness and you kind of mix that in with the Taurus energy. There's that stillness, there's that serenity, maybe even being able to surrender in a way to the new, to a change, for instance, or perhaps there's something here about our own intuitive um, feelings about these shifts coming up, especially through a lens of morality, right? And, and sort of our own ethical views about these changes because of course you know when it comes to social changes 
we're not all going to agree <laughs> with them. And I think this moon or sorry, this Mars in Pisces is sort of pointing to this, pointing to word or anger, right? Or anger about any changes that do not suit our own sort of moral compass. Things don't feel right. You know, Pisces gets a sense of things. And especially with moon being in Scorpio, there could be a lot of, uh, well, you could say paranoia, but you could also say a lot of truth um, in how we feel. The suspiciousness of, of Scorpio, I feel, it, it sort of represents the part of us that is able to recognize red flags, for instance, is able to protect ourselves. That's so much about our survival. So I think the moon in Scorpio adds these qualities of hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm getting a sense. I'm getting a feeling of things here. So, you know, I feel like this could perhaps be related to your own personal power in this regard. So yeah, the intensity is building indeed. Now the dispositor then of the sun is Venus and that's conjunct Chiron and there's the score to Ceres. So we see here that Venus and Aries is so much more about the self. It's so much more about our personal values, our personal interests. And at the same time, how these things are in a way a big part of our own healing and a big part of what we are learning to 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 work with on a level where we recognize, oh, I, I feel insecure or oh, I feel triggered by by that situation. So I feel as if at the same time, a lot of this stuff coming up during this full moon relates to our self-worth and our self-esteem, our relationship to self, our relationship to money as well, our relationship to our physical security or, and our own sort of resources. But having this, I suppose, independent view, <laughs> what's sort of coming to my mind is... Um, when I think of it on a collective level and in terms of significant, powerful financial shifts with the conjunction, at the same time, there are individuals, right? There are individual human beings who have their own views and their own values and what they want. So there could be some anger I guess around this full moon right a lot of rage actually I would even say a a rebellion a <laughs> a pushback a an f you to certain systems and new ways of doing things that could be a thing or an f you to to certain destructive um powerful, uh, degrading, sinister acts <laughs> from those who are very influential. So yeah. And with the square then to, to Ceres, especially because Chiron is creating that square to Ceres, to Ceres. Well, you know, Ceres is so much about our attachments and it's also about separation there's grief and loss actually present when it comes to series, when you really explore the mythology as well. But I think this square highlights the, just the, the disgust, the, the frustration, the how could you, yeah, there just seems to be something quite intense about how, we are being treated or how it feels that you as an individual are being treated. And so perhaps Venus and Chiron in Aries, especially with Mercury still being in Aries at this time, and it's still retrograde, I feel like the Aries part of it highlights our ability to really think about and reflect upon what do I want? What is my next step? how do I wish to embark on my own personal journey and how that relates to success, right? Ceres and 
Capricorn sort of says, I'm attached to my success, <laughs> like I'm attached to my achievements. There could be some fears, I suppose, you could say around this time about possible disillusionments, uh, possible dissolving, right? Certain things sort of falling apart, um, which, yeah, can be confronting and scary. But at the same time, when we also look at it in another way, it could be that such matters are very healing and it's it's almost as if we seek to make peace with <laughs> a certain path that we thought we were on and we thought okay this is the trajectory and this is what I want and this is a part of my plan but I can't help but think that this is a time period where so many of us are having these huge epiphanies and revelations and we're sort of going okay I've had this plan but you know what scratch it by like it's it's out with the old and in with the new but yet such <laughs> such realizations that I say they're not quite here yet I feel as if there's over the next couple of days you know things could really start to to come up and even when I reflect on this for myself I have been getting these aha moments I actually posted about it on a <laughs> On my Instagram and it's that mercurial no sorry that Aquarian that Aquarian Uranian thing where there's the aha the flashes of insight that oh I never thought of it like that oh I didn't see it like that before but oh the connections wow right so this is so much what I think what the conjunction is about and I also feel as if we're going to notice more and more of these sort of epiphanies and realizations as time goes on. But what I do want to mention then is that there is the fixed T-square. So with a fixed T-square, fixed signs can be very stubborn, very stuck in their ways. But yet you see the thing about the full moon, it's something that I didn't mention at the beginning, but the full moon is the handle of a bucket. And we're going to go with that today. So when you remove all of the asteroids and you just look at the planets, well, of course, the luminaries as well, but um, there is a bucket shape and the full moon is <laughs> is the handle. So we're going to sort of look at um, look at the full moon through this lens. But basically, all of this is to say that whilst there's friction and tension and uh, my way or the highway and no this is your fault oh you know the blame game when it comes to fixed signs right the refusal to take accountability this type of stuff it's annoying <laughs> as someone who's very fixed okay um i can be stubborn at times <laughs> but anyway the full moon i feel in scorpio it's saying okay well you're being forced there's a force there's a a push to 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 change, to face ourselves, to face our fears, to face our unconscious. And this is also part of the fact that Pluto is the one of the, this is the dispositors of the moon. So what I put there is that this is a full moon where you're going to have your Phoenix rising moment. And <laughs> it's interesting because the the sort of stubbornness that I just talked about, whilst that can even be seen um, just in a lens through, oh, you don't want to maybe face uh, like a, a point or you don't want to admit when you're wrong. This energy can also show up as when we don't recognize that something isn't actually good for us or healthy for us. And it would probably behoove us to... Uh, to be able to say hey yeah okay I surrender I get it I I want to embark on this new path I want to change this for the better <laughs> even Pluto being in Aquarius Aquarius is very much the sign that says dreaming of a better tomorrow hope is always there <laughs> whenever it comes to to Aquarius Aquarius is very much about the future but of course Aquarius also wants a future that is bright and it's healthy and people get along you know Aquarian energy has this vision its own sort of vision this um sort of utopia in its own mind about humanity it's not to say that their vision is 
is correct or that it's doable or that it's realistic, of, co of course. But the point being that Pluto is sort of like this representation of us rising from the ashes. But I feel as if this is a rising from the ashes moment that is linked back to October because of that solar eclipse. And <coughs> the sun illuminating the moon, I, th I think, illuminates the support. You know, Taurus energy can be very supportive, very secure in itself and held. It's that fixed Earth quality, right? So I think we're reminded around this time that we are held and we're secure in this moment. And I also want to mention that the sort of tension between our sort of Taurus and Scorpio house around this uh, full moon, there's some type of resolve through Pluto. And I feel like Pluto is this, like I was saying, you know, it's this Phoenix rising moment for us. So do consider then how these planets communicate within your own chart. Consider, you know, do you have any planets in Taurus and the Scorpio and Aquarius as well? Just look to your own chart and see how how is your how are your planets being impacted by this full moon? I mean, you could have the moon already in Scorpio there, and so the full moon is quite close to that for you. You know, you could have Venus in Scorpio around one uh, zero degrees to about twelve degrees, fourteen degrees or so, or you could maybe have Mercury in Taurus at about twelve degrees. So, yeah, consider how things show up for you and even with Leo you know Leo then can act as a pretty sensitive point during this full moon as well so I feel like that Leo part of it 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 sort of says hey I'm over here you can use me <laughs> use me um and let me in sort of tag me into the to the ring <laughs> tag me in for support and I think then it's our Leo house that can perhaps point towards some healthy confidence and self-assurance. Okay. Right. So I want to further explore this sun moon stuff. So with the, the sun and moon being an opposite, opposite signs, of course, this is what happens during full moons. And then with Pluto also being a part of it, and then the fixed signs really being activated, there is this resistance to change. But Pluto also forces us beyond our limits. Pluto, whilst it <clears throat> may seem unfair, whilst it may seem like we're being punished, <laughs> I think that it's only once we get to the other side of a situation that we're able to reflect and go, I'm so, so glad. I'm so glad. I'm going to give you an example, right? I'm, I'll give you an example just from my own personal experience. So back in 2016, I was en route to go and teach English in Colombia. And Unfortunately, I did not end up going, okay, was redirected. So I came home and then I really started to work on astrology and doing what I do on here. And whilst, you know, back then it seemed, it kind of seemed like, oh, you know, that didn't work out, regret, should have done that oh, that was a waste, you know, this type of stuff. Well, I'm actually glad because now I'm on this path. Now I'm getting to do this stuff today, what I do on here. And really, <laughs> when I think about it in hindsight, when I really think about it, um, with the lockdowns and COVID um, happening, I'm quite relieved that I was home for that, right? I was back in my home sort of country for that because I don't know how that would have, you know, how that would have played out for me. That could have maybe been quite chaotic. But anyway, the point being that we may not sort of realize that even the the decisions that we make in, in life that, you know, we may think, oh, why, why, why? 
those decisions can actually be really healthy and, and can serve us <laughs> in good beneficial ways in the long run. And I just think that can be said about anything in life, really, you know, when you really look back, I'm sure there are maybe some decisions you can think about that you've made throughout your life. And you think, I'm, I'm glad that I didn't go down that path. I'm glad that I chose this one instead, because now I'm where I am now. <laughs> right. So yes, do consider this with Pluto, you know, we're forced we're forced beyond our limits. We're forced into territories, the unknown, uh, territories that can be scary. But these things I talk about, there's so much about groups. There's so much about community and teams, right? Because this is Aquarian energy as well. But I feel like the Leo part sort of says, <laughs> who does not clap when you shine? It's sort of like seeing, you know, whenever you are succeeding or whenever you are doing really well and you feel confident and you feel good about your past can you perhaps even think about people in your life or times when it just doesn't feel like people see you they don't recognize you they don't want to see you shine <laughs> they don't want to see you succeed so we're noticing then these sort of power struggles that could be up ahead with this full moon so with the sun opposite moon there is the con this confrontational sort of energy this this struggle right oppositions have a, a saturnian quality to them so at the same but at the same time we can reach a compromise there's a give and take there's a balance to the sun and moon to oppositions in this way so this is about our personal values being Taurus versus other people's values being Scorpio. This is about our personal physical security being Taurus versus our transformations being Scorpio. This is about my comforts versus being forced to change. So with that, I want to remind you that there were eclipses in Taurus and Scorpio back in 2022, 2023. There were Scorpio, or sorry, the nodes were also there. So this taught us about our own resilience and we were taken away way way out of our comfort levels um, back then maybe you can even reflect on that for yourself and you know thinking about your own Taurus Scorpio axis in your chart where were you uh, forced to change and to be resilient can you see how much you have evolved you have like grown an old version of yourself. So this is like a reminder. <laughs> this is a reminder because like I said, this full moon has something to tell us about that solar eclipse. I know for myself, I have Scorpio in the third, Taurus in the ninth, and I have certainly pushed myself outside of my comfort zone when it comes to going live. Back in October, 2022, I'd never done it before. I didn't even think of doing it before. It was something that just felt very scary to me, very daunting to me. But yet here I am now and I've done so many and I've gotten to collaborate with some amazing astrologers. Um, so I'm very, I'm very thankful, actually. I'm very, very thankful. And what I also want to mention then is that this is a full moon that sort of says, shake off any bad juju for the better shake it off okay we're getting rid of the toxic waste the toxicity anything that's like a virus anything that's ooh, you know get rid of it okay this is scorpio scorpio is like purge 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 you know scorpio is the type of energy that can go hey i want to quit smoking and just does it does it sores doing it <laughs> many people are like how did you do that you know Scorpio goes I want to run a marathon boom what hi you know yeah this is the power of Scorpio this is the the determination right Scorpio is that kind of energy that says I am gonna fight tooth and nail to get what I want I'm not letting go oh no and don't you dare get in my way <laughs> but Scorpio also says that, that the best kind of revenge is success. 
the best kind of way to say screw you to the haters is to soar like the phoenix and to focus on your own personal development and your own sort of path your your path of success who then and what have you outgrown and who is not taking the flight with you oh who's not taking that flight with you who is not ready to soar and that's this is not about this is not about judging it's not about good or bad right or wrong it's just having this honest sort of common sense I suppose sun and Taurus this common sense view this realistic practical view of like it just doesn't make sense that I can see that I'm at this point in my life and this other person is over here and it just we're just not on the same level and we're just not on that path we're not on that same trajectory okay but at the same time be patient with this move slow sit back I find it interesting because Scorpio is often associated with being a sign that can just cut right sort of just uses the pinchers to to cut and can be very quick to go hey no don't want to do that boom and that was sort of saying that but I can't help but think that it's also important to recognize these extremes as well when they can maybe get out of control and so I feel as if the sun in Taurus is helping support us with this just to move slowly to let the truth be revealed let it be revealed we we may sense things we can pick up on the vibes we may ask ourselves what is holding us back from stepping into our personal power and so this is about being a warrior being a leader in this regard and cutting off dead weight then letting it letting it go and it's also then about legacy those lost living through us Scorpio is a sign of loss and that could be physical loss that can be a psychological loss an emotional loss so yeah these things will also I feel be felt strongly around this full moon but yes I just want to remind you then with the extremes just be cautious if the extremes presented via this sign when you really look at them how healthy are they how good are they for you and your own well-being how good are they for another person's so yes just move with with caution in this regard and the thing about Scorpio too is Scorpio is a sign that comes to learn how to master its emotions their self-mastery in in Scorpio Scorpio can be a very compulsive sign uh, sort of ruled by its temptations by its impulses but it's also a sign that comes to really learn how to work with these things in masterful ways and this is really a part of Scorpio's power and what makes them super magnetic <laughs> so think about here letting go of an unconscious habit moon which blocks you from joy and happiness the sun the sun being in taurus then says this is a season of finding our joy in being secure this is about our inner security this is about appreciating as well what we have physically and this is also about patience so what we see then is that this is about reflecting on our unconscious habits and emotional needs to do with death and loss as well but there is a release here there's clarity and we can also embrace our sensitivities and our feelings not to say that we should act on them of course that's that's different 
just to feel them, but of course, not to necessarily act on them. Okay, I will just read through your comments first. Uh, why is my thing working? Hello, the scenic route. Hi, welcome. <laughs> Good to have you. And thank you. <laughs> uh, hello, Captain Ron. Welcome. Ahoy. <laughs> awesome. Good to have you here. Oh, thank you so much for signing up. Thank you. Glad to have you. Oh, great. Yeah, that course, um, it's very beneficial. I hope that you, you do find it to be really useful. Thank you. And hello to Michael. Hello to Black Swan. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello to Daniel. Hi. And oh, you said Scorpio and Leo, trauma and drama. And um, let me see. Okay. We'll be in your fourth house. Hello to Mila. Hi. <laughs> and hello to Daniela. Welcome. Thank you for being here, everyone. Awesome. Okay. So we're going to move on to the next slide. So a couple of other aspects. Oh, are you going to load for me? Oh, there we go. Yes. Post conjunction. So as I was saying a moment ago, we've got the Jupiter Uranus conjunction in Taurus happening at the weekend. And so this full moon then happens after the conjunction. And the conjunction kickstarted a new 14 year cycle within your Taurus house. But you see, with the trine to Lilith, like I was saying a moment ago, Jupiter and Lilith are the same degree. There is an importance here of liberating ourselves from self punishment, self blame unrealistic expectations we set on ourselves here's the thing about well I feel like Virgo and Pisces can be like this these energies can take a situation that's happening outside of themselves and blame themselves for it and especially with Virgo can they can beat themselves up Maybe because there is a big part of wanting to fix. It's like, why didn't I fix that? Why didn't I change that? What was the mistake I made in that? So I think Jupiter with the trine sort of says, hey, 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 no, no. New understandings here. New understandings about these things. That, hey, no, like that wasn't your thing. That that doesn't belong to you. It never did belong to you. It's not. It's not up to you to be the one to go and sort of fix everybody but yet at the same time maybe this is recognizing when we need to rest and relax when our brain is just too chaotic I mean I know for me if I'm doing too much if I'm pushing too hard if I'm putting too many things on my schedule then my brain just becomes just so focused on everything, everything. And that can be quite an overwhelming space to be in. And then I can just go into this overdrive of work mode and doing and doing and doing and doing. But I think Jupiter and Taurus is so much about, no, no, rest is so necessary. If you can around this time, rest, rest, rest. <laughs> Taurus reminds us that rest and relaxation, these are just as important as work <laughs> and doing things. 
<laughs> right? We're not machines. We're humans. We're human beings. Of course, in this sort of social, you know, the social position that we're in, it is about, okay, right, we constantly have to, to be working and things like this. And when I say this, I'm a total hypocrite because I'm always sort of moving and, and even when I'm trying to rest my mind and thinking about, oh, 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 next thing, next thing, next thing. Still, perhaps Jupiter and Taurus has been ushering in, you know, the importance of, of relaxation. And maybe the conjunction has something to say about this, that your time is valuable and that your time also requires some space some you know some of that room for relaxation in your life and it's so necessary so there could be some breakthroughs actually to do with rest around this time period and that valuable time for ourselves now palace retrograde will also score juno so there could be something here about revisiting old narratives to do with our creative visions which are being challenged by commitments we have made within our relationships <laughs> right so I mean it could just be something as, as small as okay there perhaps is a project that you're trying to look over and you maybe you're feeling pretty enthusiastic about it with that Sagittarius influence but then there's the challenge here because hey, you know, there's some other commitments that you've made already. You can't do it all. <laughs> this, I feel, is an aspect that says you can't, you can't do it all. You can't be in two places at once. <laughs> so maybe there's something here about how can we adjust? How can we adapt so that win-win outcomes can be made? And what I've also put there is there's a part of us that can overlook the details but there's another part that can be too consumed by the details <laughs> can you even think about that within your own life times whenever you're so caught up and hell-bent on the details so focused on them but then there's other times when you might kind of just completely skim over the details <laughs> and maybe that has something to say about your health about being tired about how much you've eaten for the day, you know. So these very like practical reasons for why that could be. But yeah, perhaps around this full moon, these things could be challenged and highlighted, especially because there is such intensity building. Oh, maybe this is why rest is so important around this time period. I say this and I could barely sleep last night. Yeah, hopefully I sleep better tonight. <laughs> okay. So I believe this is the last slide that we have of this overview of the moon and everything of the aspects. But here's this little crossover. So the moon is making a trine to Vesta. So there could be something here about loss within families, loss to do with property and home. But protection is also enhanced here keeping ourselves safe becomes a priority. So what I'm getting from this is that if it does sort of all kick off around this full moon, around the conjunction, perhaps there will be a greater focus on our personal relationships then with our family and our loved ones and really the protective piece there. But I also just think in general, you know, with full moons, the full moon especially being in Scorpio, it can be a time of all the emotions just sort of come to the surface and there's a lot that's trying to come through. <laughs> there's a lot that's trying to be, to be released on an emotional level and maybe some of that has to do with family dynamics, to do with the past, the past the past and and how things played out and the memories there tied to the past and our attachments here to certain people and places and things but yet we also see with this being a trine gifts right gifts of nurturing gifts of support and empathy which can then assist us right with the sextile so the sextile between Vesta and Juno these 
gifts can assist us within our relationships. For, so for example, when might we worry too much <laughs> or what is a priority for us? Maybe we can give a helping hand. We can be there around this time period to support certain family members through their own losses, through their own pain, through their own grief. That that could be a big thing around this full moon. Because if you think about it, whilst your own emotions may be heightened or intensified, consider those around you, right? Your friends, your family, your partner, certain people you work with, you know, your co-workers. I'm sure they're feeling something. So could be a good time to maybe check in to to just do small you know a small uh how are you you know what's going on with you and 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 to be there to to support to support others i think this is a moon that's going to assist us with this and at the same time the sun is making that trying to juno so whilst there is challenge within our relationships too Sun welcomes common sense and this slow and gradual approach, right? Slow and gradual improvements, which will take time. So kind of you think about the challenges I previously mentioned between Juno and Pallas retrograde. Maybe then the sun in Taurus can help us recognize, okay, how can I slow down enough to be present? to be present with my loved ones, to be present within my relationships? How can I even appreciate the people in my life and what I already have? I feel like this is a moon, of course, that is so much about that, that as I, as I uh, was saying earlier, the security and the support, this holding quality. But yet, you see, the full moon... And Scorpio is the release point. It's the shedding point. It's the breakthrough. It's the, oh, right, okay, this is what my unconscious was trying to say to me so that I can actually bring it back to the sun and kind of think about, oh, okay, this is how I wish to feel comforted and supported. You know, it could be just something to do with trust, right? Trust could come up here. Trust and intimacy and emotional bonding, right? And maybe there's a few things that, haven't that has not been said yet and that will start to present itself and reveal itself around the full moon especially with mercury being retrograde in aries uh, we may feel this inner sort of push to want to to want to speak about how we truly truly feel with that honesty and that rawness so yeah there could be a lot of raw sort of sensitive emotions that come up vulnerability could be a big thing around this time period but as there is the the release and the shedding and the breakthroughs there's also then the ability to bring it back to okay right (sighs) I I feel I feel like we're all on the same page here or I feel like you kind of get where I'm coming from and we can move forward with greater patience and calm so yes I wanted to say that, but then also with the trying here, this can highlight gifts of being realistic and steadfast and practical. So how these things can help us when it comes to, right, Juno, Sextile Vesta, when it comes to the family and household stuff. So for example, how can we try and remain calm within a crisis? Taurus is great at that. (laughs) Taurus can remain calm in a crisis, calm in an urgency situation, urgent situation. But really, I feel like these harmonious aspects that we're noticing between the earth and water signs during the full moon, they can help us with, okay, attending to practical matters, but also to have that ability to regulate our emotions. All right, so I think that is us for the aspects, and then we're gonna get into your horoscopes. Yes, just have a quick break and I'll read through your comments again. Mila, you said that that is you at the moment. You you wish you could rest, but you can't, really busy with worth. Yeah, finishing your masters. See, that's a lot. I feel like this is something that's just, it's happening 
and when I observe this, you know, with friends, family, um, you know, with what you've others are sharing on online and everything, people are just so so busy, <laughs> and the cost of living and everything does not does not help. <sighs> yeah. Okay, so just going to have a drink of water and then we're going to get into your horoscopes. Thank you for being here. All right. Radio. Oh, before we do, actually, I just want to let you know about a workshop that I'm going to be hosting on the 2nd of June. You can register for the workshop by going to the link in the description. But it's going to be about the Aries rising. So if you have an Aries rising and you want to know about your life path, then this is the perfect workshop for you. The unique thing about this workshop is that, well, I wish for this to be a series of workshops. It just depends obviously on the interest for each of the signs, but the unique thing about it is that I wanna gather together a few, just a selection. I mean, this is gonna be just a few, you know, a small group of people basically. I wanna gather you into a workshop environment where I'm guiding it, I'm teaching it and you can learn then about your life path. You can learn about the 12 houses. So that whole path throughout your chart there. But you're with other Aries risings. So there's that commonality with other Aries risings. But yet you'll also be able to explore the differences. Because with having an Aries rising, you know, your chart ruler is going to be in a very different position, isn't it? just based on which sign it, it's in, which house it's in, which aspects it's making, stuff like this. But yeah, the, the point about it is so we can all gather together in one space and you can perhaps learn from each other and your own sort of experiences. We can have discussions and conversations, but I also just want to teach you about your chart. <laughs> I, I want to walk you through your life path. So yeah, I just wanted to let you know. So if you're interested you can do so by going to the link in the description. Hello to energy of destiny. Welcome to you. You've got a Pisces sun, Capricorn moon and a Virgo rising. Uh, Yogi, welcome to you. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Great to have you. Okay, so we're going to get into your horoscopes now. Aries. Okay. Aries, so this full moon is going to be happening in your eighth house. And the unique thing, oh, hold on a second. Let me see here. Wait, let me check something. We'll get back to you in a minute, Aries. <laughs> Ha 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 ha. Funnel. And go here. Okay. Yeah. One, two, three, four. All right, got it. Okay, so we're going to go back. <laughs> Sorry, I had to check something there, Aries. Thank you. I know patience, eh? <laughs> patience for Aries. <laughs> All right, we're going to go again. Okay, so Aries, we notice here that the full moon is going to be happening in your eighth house. 
So there's a lot of strength in this in this full moon, okay? There's a lot of weight being held here. And what I'm getting from this energy is, well, there's a lot to be released regarding your unconscious drives and your unconscious motivations. So for instance, thinking about what's holding you back from having your phoenix moment, so to speak, from rising up when it comes to certain emotional pains, unresolved traumas, for example. It could also be a time where it feels like the, the veil, the veil is very thin for you, right? As it's almost as if you can sense things very strongly around this full moon. And as if you can even feel certain people with you, even those who have, you know, who have lost who you have lost, who who have passed. There's a lot of there's a lot of power in this, I think. Um, but at the same time, your privacy is highlighted. Your vulnerabilities are highlighted. Your your weaknesses, emotional weaknesses. And perhaps there is a transformation in this regard that can be revitalizing for you, very cleansing. It's almost as if, you know, many of you Aries, you need a good cry, right? You need a good way to release your pent up emotions. You know, with Scorpio, it can be where there's just so much that's that's pent up, that's that's lying, sort of within the emotional body, within the energetic field. And it's not it's not being released, it's not being channeled, right? The eighth house, the eighth house is so much about how we channel our emotions, how we channel them in, in healthy ways, hopefully. And often in times we don't channel our emotions in healthy ways. We can actually channel them in really destructive ways. We can self-sabotage. We especially see this with the moon in Scorpio. Uh, we can turn things on ourselves, right? Where we can punish ourselves, blame ourselves. So I just wonder, you know, for you, oh, how much of this stuff then is linked back to October 2022? Because this is the thing about this full moon, you know, the the thing I wanted to talk about is how it's linked to intention set October 2022 with the solar eclipse in Scorpio. New beginnings, right? These these starts from back then. So I wonder, is it that you've been carrying a lot of dead weight, right? Psychological dead weight, if you will, that around this full moon, you're ready to release it. You're ready to let go of it. And for you, I think, of course, you being you, you have this, this part of you. This is a part of you, with Scorpio in your eighth house, Aries. You can be this final cut sign, Aries, right? When you, hmm, when you make a decision to cut something, to no longer do something, or to do something as well, you can be very decisive about that. <coughs> and, and very much headstrong. Like, no one's saying, like, nobody can tell you anything. You're just in, you're on your own path, and no one can get through to you. Mm -mm. When your mind is made up on something, there's no talking you around. You need to learn for yourself, make your own mistakes, and then learn from those mistakes. It's just kind of how you operate. <laughs> and sometimes this can be beneficial for you, but other times it can be actually 
pretty detrimental and, and dangerous for you. It can. But the point being, this is a full moon in which there's a release here, a shedding. And I think a lot of this has to do with your own personal empowerment and self-mastery. And the other thing I want to mention, of course, is the dispositor of the full moon. That is Mars. And it's in Pisces. So I say this and I think about how around this full moon perhaps there's a lot going on behind the scenes that people don't see. Aries has a very mysterious side to it. It's it's so interesting because Aries you can be so like forthright and direct and hey this is me. Mm, But there's a lot that's hidden of course. I feel like everyone's mysterious in their own way. (laughs) But for you, you have this whole other mysterious layer to you that can be very sensitive, that doesn't want to upset other people, and really, really dislikes being misunderstood. Aries hates being misunderstood. It's like, oh, hi, you know, it just doesn't make sense to you because you're so open and and honest in this way, right? So I think there is something about this full moon that's also going to trigger this very deep and personal and emotional and very sensitive part of you. So my kind of view on this to maybe help you work with this energy is to get the energy out (laughs) get it out to to feel to feel okay so we're moving on to taurus see um hello welcome to Fatma I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly welcome to you good to have you here okay so Taurus Taurus so this full moon will happen in your seventh house okay so there's a lot of strength and power going into that of relating, relating to others. Taurus, you are the sign that comes in and out of other people's lives and experience, um, you experience transformations, these emotional at times very confronting transformations and you're all about depth you seek depth you seek to go to go way deeper with others psychologically and sort of unraveling (laughs) other people's psyches and why they do certain things etc but of course the thing about the seventh house is that it's often these qualities within the sevens that are reflected back to us, you know? So in actuality, you tend to get into relationships, partnerships, friendships, what have you, uh, with people who can be quite domineering, they can be controlling, they can be extremely insightful, there can be power plays, power struggles, and partners who also have this real resilience to them, this grit, <laughs> this 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 grit to them. So the thing about getting into these relationships and meeting these types of people is they reflect back to you your own ability to be like this. <laughs> 
your own ability to sort of tap into your personal power. And so you experience these very strong uh, emotional transformations throughout your life through these relating experiences, situations, and so on. So I feel like the full moon is going to illuminate a lot of this stuff. It's going to bring a lot of clarity to, to these areas for you. But these areas, these, these things that I mentioned, they started October 2022. So there was the eclipse in Scorpio, October 2022. And so that's when a new cycle began. So maybe try to even think about back to that time, you know, was there any significant new relationship that started around that time or following the, you know, the next six months after that? So coming into 2023, uh, was there a particular business deal that was made? A particular marriage could have also um, happened for you. A contract, an agreement could have been signed that um how do we say it's it tied you in it tied you into to a situ to a contract a, a long-term situation in this way and the reason you know why i'm further suggesting this is because venus was in scorpio during that solar eclipse conjunct the eclipse and venus is your chart ruler so i wonder you know I wonder if this full moon in Scorpio is going to illuminate these matters. It's going to bring a lot of clarity to the relationship sphere arena for you. And possibly thinking about a renewal, a, a transformation to do with the contract and agreement. This could be tied into, to, of course, certain business deals, your employer, right? How you, you earn in this regard, how you invest, how you even share, how you share resources, for instance. So yeah, there could be a significant sort of um, powerful renewal up ahead. But I also can't help but think that this is also about exploring your unconscious habits, any unconscious habits that are holding you back from being or feeling more empowered within your relationships at the same time. And what I also then want to say is that Mars being the dispositor of this full moon, that's in Pisces in the 11th house. So with the dispositor here of the full moon being in Pisces, I I think that a lot of the the contract agreement partnership relationship stuff is then linked to that of community your hopes and dreams for the future. I think when it comes to you Taurus you're the types of people who can <laughs> you can actually be these live and let live people. <laughs> Where you're sort of like, um, no judgment, just let people be who they are as long as they don't interfere with me and what I'm doing, you know, this type of attitude. And I think you can also be very compassionate of other people, their, their upbringing, their experiences, you know, what they've been through. You have a lot of patience for people, <laughs> I think, um, not not always, I, I would say that. I think you have patience for people who, you know, you want to be patient with, let, let's just say that. And people who you do genuinely care about, right? Those people who are your friends, those people who you, you um, connect with, perhaps on a spiritual level, who you are like-minded with, you know, this type of stuff. So I say all of this because... I think this is a full moon that is going to also have something to say about your friendships and about your giving qualities, your giving nature <laughs> within friendships. And maybe it could be that 
there is something that, you know, that's, there's an overextension of sorts, or there's some deception, possibly. There's some disillusionment, of course, with Mars being conjunct Neptune around the full moon too. So yeah, I cannot but think that the, the relationship stuff that I talk about is tied in also with the friendship stuff. You know, it could even be a situation where certain friends and people in your life are trying to tell you about something or they're trying to even warn you about a partnership or a relationship. Um, there, right? There's the, as I was saying with the full moon in Scorpio, the truth is revealed and we can really sense things. So there could be something here to do with all of this, but yet it is also a matter of are you listening? You know, how much are you willing to listen to other people's views? Because hey, the thing about it too is with Pisces, it can be kind of confusing, right? Yeah. So I would say in this regard to maybe help you work with this energy is to gather up the facts that you need. And I think Mercury retrograde in your 12th house can assist you with this around the full moon it's sort of giving you this opportunity to go over um the necessary information that's available and to be able to to then whenever mercury does eventually turn direct on the 25th of april to move forward with this greater clarity okay so moving on to gemini I will try and make these a bit quicker. I'm sorry, I'm kind of, I'm talking quite a bit. <laughs> Must be in a chatty mood. Okay, so now we're moving on to Gemini. So Gemini, this full moon is going to happen in your sixth house. So this means that there's a lot of strength and power that's going into that of, well, let's think about health firstly. There could be a real requirement, a need to consider your health around this time and maybe to pay attention to any warning signs, okay, that's that could be something, or to even sense if something feels off, maybe connecting with your body. This just could be something, you know, very energetic. It's more about energetics. It's more about working with the body, tuning in with the body, respecting it, actually, respecting your body's needs. And maybe as well, recognizing how your unconscious habits have so much to say about the way your body functions. It's interesting um, because often it's our own sort of psychological stuff that can manifest in physical ways. You know, it's our sort of psychological um, concerns that can show up through the body. So, hey, it could be that many Gemini, you know, you're feeling actually quite stressed. You're feeling quite stressed, quite overwhelmed around this full moon. Maybe you've been overworking. You see here that there's a lot uh, in the southern hemisphere for you. There's a lot. All of those planets are above the horizon, apart from the moon in this case. So yeah, um, maybe there's something very significant about slowing down. You know, when we really bring in the sun in, into this particular horoscope when we when we look to the sun and we think about how the sun is in Taurus in the 12th and it's perhaps saying okay look after yourself and what I further want to mention is the sixth house it can rule our stress levels so the moon being such you know the moon in Scorpio especially being such an intense sort of place so Scorpio can be a really intense extreme place for the moon to be in it could be that you know your stress levels are just so heightened around this full moon so even more reason to 
be able to slow down. But what I also want to mention is when we think about the Phoenix, uh, the Phoenix moment to do with this full moon, perhaps this is a Phoenix moment for you that is so much about the amount of <laughs> just the amount of power that you hold within your work, within your job. And I don't mean this even, um, I don't mean this in terms of being this powerful figure over others. It's just more about inner empowerment, your personal empowerment, maybe even recognizing that you've achieved so much within your working sphere and you've shown such dedication and determination and you haven't given up. And I can't help but think that these matters that I talk about, they're linked to intentions that you set October 2022. So there was that solar eclipse in your sixth house around that time. And so this time around, there's clarity, you know. So for instance, it could have been that you set new intentions to do with really improving, you know, improving within your craft. You know, that's the thing about the sixth house as well. It 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 rules how we refine our skills. So if you kind of think of it like the second house is about our skills and our talents. The sixth house looks at how we refine those skills and talents and how we improve and how we get better. So for you, Gemini, perhaps at the around the end of 2022 with you know October there, you had all of these intentions of like, okay, I want to improve on this. I want to get better at this. It could have been related to your job, a system, a service you provide, a hot like a, a craft. I was going to say hobby there, but yeah, I suppose craft a craft that you have is a sort of like a hobby for you but yeah it could be a craft situation so improving and maybe this is a full moon that's going to illuminate these things for you and bring a lot of clarity and perhaps at the same time a release so a release a, a new way forward uh, like I was also mentioning the phoenix rising rising like the phoenix and we also want to think about the dispositor of the moon, which is Mars. So that's in Pisces. <laughs> so that's in the 10th house. Oh, this is just the cherry on top. Because here we have this 10th house activation and it's so much about how you're seen in front of the public and it's about your reputation and what you become known for. Over the past few weeks, my goodness, Gemini, you're really getting the recognition you deserve, the recognition that you've been working so hard at. Um, and it's not necessarily that you've been pushing to be recognized, if you will. It's more about you've been living in alignment. You've been showing up consistently. And Mars being in Pisces then, it's this sort of subconscious way of gaining that recognition without necessarily searching for it. Um so it is it's interesting I think for you but yeah I think a lot is coming through here to do with okay you're you're on the right path I feel as if this is a full moon that's it's nudging you it's it's <laughs> it's tapping on you on you and saying hey 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 you know you're doing great you're doing great like I see you I see you and this could be a very spiritual thing too okay yeah, as I was saying a moment ago, feeling spiritually aligned. <laughs> okay, so we're going to move on to Cancer next. Uh, Daniel, you said you're excited for Cancer. Oh, okay, Cancer rising. So this is yours then? So Cancer, we've got the full moon happening in your fifth house, in the fifth house for you. So there seems to be much strength and power being placed into that of, well, let's think firstly about your creativity, hobbies, your forms of enjoyment, things you like to do in your spare time. There could be great significance here when it comes to your romantic relationships, possibly making sense of an unconscious habit that's holding you back from fully expressing your love or sharing your love. Perhaps there are also big 
themes here to do with trust and emotional bonding and vulnerability within romantic relationships. And, but I further want to mention then when we relate it to hobbies, well, self mastery could be a big part of this. And we want to then reflect on October, right? So, October 2022 you set new intentions then within this house and you set new intentions to do with hobbies, for instance, and your creativity and art and everything. So with that, I wonder how much you've grown. (laughs) I love this actually about this full moon, if we consider the solar eclipse that happened back then, because this shows the trajectory that we've been on within our Scorpio house. So how much you've grown, how much you've evolved. And, you know, this, of course, can relate to your creativity and the improvement of your creativity and gaining momentum, gaining greater power uh, when it comes to these areas. And that's the self-mastery piece too. But this could also be related to parenting. This could also be related to children right? So if you have children and you're, you know, you've got a, this this Cancerian energy, right? Uh, children is related to the fifth house. Of course, the fifth house rules children in astrology. But then of course, creations in general um, are found under this house. So yes, this could apply to that of children and being a parent and that whole transformative journey that has happened for you since becoming a parent and even the different stages of your own development through parenthood that could be a big thing or the development of your children and possible sort of power struggles that have come up for your children you know you kind of think for example about any potential challenges or difficulties that your children have been having and you know how much you've been that supportive figure for them, right? Even the moon is your chart ruler after all. So yeah, I think I think this is certainly a full moon that is going to pack a punch for you. It's going to be very insightful, especially because you're ruled by the moon. So wherever the moon is, it's like you can really tap into that energy. You can feel it quite strongly. Um, so in the case of Scorpio, yeah, um, major sort of energetic shifts coming for you, through for you within these areas that I mentioned, um, even thinking about how much you've transformed and really outgrown um, old versions of yourself when it comes to romantic relationships, okay, and, and dating and everything. And hey, even if you're single, even if you don't want to date, you're not interested in, in dating, you know, there's even that piece to do with your own individuality and your ego and just more focusing on yourself, right? Maybe there's a lot of self-healing that has happened and has unfolded for you over the past um, year and a half or so. Okay, Mars. So Mars is the dispositor of the full moon. That's in Pisces. It's in the ninth house. So, hey, this I feel then brings it to discovery, (laughs) um, further understanding, just wanting to learn more, many Cancerians are really just digging their teeth into education and mastering a certain practice, becoming better, just, yeah, really becoming very good at a subject that is related to spirituality, symbolism, creativity, photography, film, these, these types of areas, I think, um, ceiling could be another thing, you know, water, water activities, these, these types of things. So yes, and hey, could also be a retreat, right? There's something here about a retreat or wanting to escape, wanting to get away for a bit to properly recharge. Thank you, David, for, sh- or Daniel, sorry, sorry, my apologies. Thank you, Daniel, for sharing your experiences and also a hello to the creator welcome to you hi good to have you okay so we're moving on to leo next so leo this 
the moon is happening in your, in your fourth house. <sighs> okay, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, or am I? Am I? Leo, this full moon could be quite challenging for you uh, because as soon as I sort of look at this chart and I notice how the full moon is in the fourth and then of course Mars is in the eighth there could be a lot that's trying to get through psychologically and maybe there's just certain truths that you're not ready to face yet or it's that you are ready to face them but it's still like oh you know it's the way I'm kind of getting it are these sort of energetic waves hitting you and hitting you and hitting you. And what I'm also getting from this is you being at a certain point, you know, feeling perhaps defeated, feeling just emotionally depleted. That could be a big thing here. But yet certain family members or um, certain people who you thought you could trust they just decide to uh, get you when you're dying. You know, those types of people, right? And I think these matters are really making you question other people's integrity, other people's respect for you and their honesty and their authenticity. I think you're really going to start to question these things strongly around this full moon. I mean, Leo, you're a sign that is so much about authenticity after all. You have very little patience for people who are false or who are deceptive. You have this sort of, <laughs> this inner radar that's sort of there continuously. You can kind of pick up on <laughs> the vibes, let's just say. And hey, you may not fully be able to comprehend or understand these parts of yourself especially I think you know when you're younger you know you Leo I think you're the type of you're the types of people who you have these very strong sort of premonitions or these strong feelings whenever you're young and you don't really know where to place them if you will and um, how to how to um use them um in ways where you know there's some type of strength or you can use them in a, in a beneficial way. But as you grow, as you sort of move through life and gain your own experiences with people and within relationships and everything, you become, you become very wise. You become very knowledgeable in your dealings with others how much to kind of give of yourself and what to keep back this type of stuff so you know I take you on this journey so to speak or maybe a ramble you could look at it like that and I, I mention it because the full moon in Scorpio is an opportunity for you to once again look at your emotional renewals how much you have changed on a very spiritual soulful emotional level throughout your life and how much you've overcome you are a very resilient you know very resilient sign um determined people <laughs> you certainly can even use your empathy your emotional understanding to help others so this full moon could be a time of release, right? There's a lot of power and strength going into these strong feelings of yours. And there could be a real renewal, a real shift, an, an energetic shift that perhaps your emotional body is sort of crying out for it, right? There could be something about the emotional body, your emotional body that feels a bit stuck. But this is a moon that's maybe going to help you shift that energy a bit. And can certainly help support you moving forward. Though, what I also wanna mention is Mars. So Mars is there in the eighth house and I think Mars being in the eighth house, then it's, it's highlighting this sort of drive to want to explore the unknown, to explore the paranormal, um, metaphysics, just, things that are um, quite 
spooky to some people, for instance, but you have this way of exploring the unknown um, in ways where, you know, you can really make sense of them or you want to be able to articulate them and even bring what you learn to others. But yeah, you can even be really brave, really brave um, on your quest into the unknown. And I think this is also representing a big part of you that's willing to go there, so to speak, <laughs> to address the taboo, <laughs> the things that, you know, people are like, oh, no, 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 let's not talk about that. And then Leo just comes up and is like, I'm going to go there, you know. <laughs> yeah, this could be a full moon that is going to highlight these areas quite strongly for you. And just one more thing, of course, this full moon also is linked to the intentions that you set October 2022. So there was an eclipse in Scorpio October 2022. So intentions were set then regarding uh, family, home, property, your emotional needs, your emotional well-being. And so we're going to see here this sort of accumulation of things. We're going to see matters rising up and coming to light and this release, this renewal, this revival of yourself. Um, and maybe a few people are not ready <laughs> to hear, maybe a few people are just not ready to hear the truth. Let's, let's say that. Okay, so Virgo. Virgo. All right, Virgo. So this full moon is happening in your third house. So there seems to be a lot of strength and power going into your, well, let's, I want to think about the third. Oh, thank you, Dan Daniel. Have a good day. Bye. Yeah. So I want to think about the third house in terms of, well, let's think of it firstly about education, just learning, just learning, right? The third house is a place of learning. And for you, Virgo, you are the types of people, whenever you seek to learn a new subject, a new study, you are, <laughs> it's, it's hard to take your head out of the book. It's hard to get you to put the pen down. It's difficult to get you to get off your computer because there is this thirsty attitude, this perhaps somewhat possessive, or not possessive, sorry, obsessive, obsessive attitude, where you just want to know more and more and more, and you pull back one layer, and then you want to get to the other layer, and then you pull back that layer, and then you want to get to the other one, and you just want to dig and dig and dig and dig and dig and dig until you can't dig anymore. This is you, Virgo. You have this no stone, leave no stone unturned. So think about this in terms of what is being released, what is being let go of, what is being shed during this full moon. Because this part of you, whilst it is admirable and your investigative sort of mindset can help you soar <laughs> within areas that involve communication, writing, publishing, marketing, sales, this type of stuff. This is also the part of you that can wear you down emotionally, okay? This is the part of you that can really trap you right where you can be your own demise mentally where you can obsessively like focus on things and become so fixated right that's a big Scorpio word it's this fixation so if there's anything that gets to you annoys you upsets you you can fix it and fix it and fix it so I think this is a full moon that is going to really assist you with 
a mental release, right? To be able to bring some type of clarity. No, I, I just want to say that it's not a black and white thing here. Um, it may sound like it given how I'm communicating. Maybe that's my own Virgo-ness, if you will. But what I mean is it's not like, you know, on the full moon that there's just going to be a release and that's it, right? That's it. You know, I've released that. I'm done. I'm, you know, I don't think life works like that. It's just more about an ease, a fading, a recognition, a, oh, I'm aware of that. I can see that about myself. Okay. Right. I, I want to try and work on that. I There's something that is being released there. Yes, I do want to say that. And I also want to mention that, that with the moon, of course, you know, it's about our unconscious habits and drives. So whilst it could be that you are letting go of some unconscious habits that are holding you back, for example, unconscious habits within conversations and discussions, this could also be that you're working with this energy for the better. You know, you're working with this energy to really think about, okay, well, how can I also perhaps release unconscious habits, shift unconscious habits that keep me back from really using my voice or being quite powerful in how I signed and and trusting in my way of articulating for instance there's just something here about you recognizing your personal power within conversations I don't think Virgo it's interesting because I don't think you fully get how much your words impact other people the the I suppose the 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 power that goes into your words and you can often be quite cutting with your words maybe you do <laughs> recognize these things about yourself but I just think that what I'm getting at here is recognizing that you know there is a lot of power to be found in, in what you say and then it does hold a lot of substance and it holds a lot of meaning more than maybe you give yourself credit for. That's what I'm, I'm really trying to get at. And so this is a Phoenix moment for you in this regard. And these matters that I talk about, they're also linked to intentions that you set October 2022. So there was the solar eclipse in Scorpio, October 2022. And that was a solar eclipse, you know, where you were setting intentions, new beginnings, right, to do with communication, to do with learning. And just to even reflect on this for myself, it's because I've been using sort of, you know, examples, but as an example, I mean, there was a lot that I created um, at the end of 2022, you know, I was just about to release my astrology guide and so that was something that was I suppose launched or really started around that time and so coming up now to the full moon there could perhaps be some type of clarity here so think about your own life think about your own process with communication and writing and learning etc Virgo and the last thing I want to say is Mars is in Pisces in the seventh house for you so during this full moon I think the the release the shedding is also linked to that of how you show up within relationships how you connect you know how you connect on an emotional level you tend to be Virgo very giving of your your time with others and I think as well you showcase a lot of compassion toward other people and naturally because this is the seventh house these matters are also re reflected back to you but yeah I think Mars then sort of indicates this desire to want to assert yourself within relationships but being somewhat passive about that right being a passive leader being a, a, a leader where it's more about being spiritually aligned spiritually attuned this type of stuff 
So I think this is a full moon that's going to bring a lot of clarity around these areas. Hello, <laughs> Brianna. Hi, Brianna. How are you doing today? Good to see you. <laughs> oh, nice to see you again. Oh, it's great. Thank you so much. You know, I recognize some people who've been here the past year for all of these lives. It's just amazing. Thank you. All right, so Virgo. Oh, good. Yay. Thank you for being here. Happy to have you. <laughs> I'm glad you could catch a live. Woo. All right, so we're moving on to Libra now. So the full moon Libra for you is happening in your second house. So there's a lot of strength and power that's going into your personal resources, your personal finances, but naturally because the houses are sort of flipped, you know, with Scorpio in the second, Taurus in the eighth, you're the type of sign that is so much about sharing. Um, I mean, yeah, Libra is the sign of sharing. Libra is the sign of exchange. Libra is more about, okay, who am I in relationship to somebody else? How can I connect with someone else? What is it that other people are telling me about myself? So with the full moon happening in your, your second house in Scorpio, it does seem as if there are significant unconscious sort of habits that are being sh uh, shifted to do with, okay, financial attitudes, money worries, um, money worries and how those things are then tied in with a partner, a relative, a child, these things. And maybe this is also about recognizing what is holding you back. You know, there could be fears. This is the thing about Scorpio too. You know, Scorpio can be a sign that shows us our greatest fears. What really scares us. What I was thinking about earlier actually was you know how whenever you're a child and and you are convinced right you're convinced that there's a monster under your bed you know you're convinced that there's a monster in the wardrobe and it's just like a shadow it's just a shadow um <laughs> and it's fine obviously but in your mind you think oh. so there are those fears but i think scorpio helps us recognize that whilst we are afraid, it doesn't mean that anything is, is, is wrong, right? It's, it's more about the, the fear itself that is so paralyzing than the, than the actual thing, I guess. But yes, fears here, fears here to do with finances, fears to do with your resources. Perhaps there's some sort of freak out for you, Libra, because it, it's interesting because you are the type of, of sign, you know, that you really want for things to be balanced and harmonious in your life. But on a very like physical level, when it comes to possessions, belongings, materials, thing, things can actually be very extreme. Things can actually really fluctuate in ways that you can't really, uh, you can't quite control. Now, of course, this is also then highlighting your ability to be a, like to uh, to gain some type of mastery over these areas as well, and to step into a place of empowerment where you can see right there are extremes, but you are also able to prepare for the down. Right, you may you may recognize more than most <laughs> that money comes and money goes. That there are times when we are in a an up in life, right? There's like a golden period, there's a, a high, but there are other times when there's a fall, there's a collapse. We're in a low period, a low dip. So I think you're the type of sign that is able to prepare for the low dip so that you can be balanced then even during those times. 
So all of this is to say that I can't help but think that this is a full moon that's going to bring a lot of this stuff, a lot of this stuff to light. And I think you're going to really surprise yourself. I think you're really going to surprise yourself with your strength and your resilience to overcome any fearful sort of situations. Um, or if we think about, of course, how there is the conjunction happening in your eighth house opposite, right? Of course, this is post the, the conjunction. So in your case, the conjunction happening in your eighth, and then of course the sun is there too, but there could be these sort of huge epiphanies and shocks and, and revelations to do with investments, to do with shared resources, to do with those more um, financial matters between you and others and thinking along the lines of physical security and feeling com uh, content and yeah, feeling quite safe then. So the full moon sort of comes along and I think is it's going to showcase, hey, you know what, you're strong. <laughs> you are resilient you've got this yes a phoenix moment let's just put it that way and these things are also tied into that of october 2022 so there was the solar eclipse that happened october 2022 in scorpio in your second house and that could have been really significant for your financial position, your earnings, your spending, your materials, stuff like this, especially because Venus was conjunct the solar eclipse back then and Venus is your chart ruler. So yeah, I feel like you sort of set off on a new path, a new journey to do with investments and saving and budgeting and everything else. So this is just basically a time of clarity, a time of release, a time of reward as well during the full moon within these areas and then when we look at mars mars is in the sixth house so then mars actually has said uh has something to say about your physical body about your health and the types of changes that you've been making to do with your health right how you have been quite goal oriented within these areas um, and more so thinking about how your health is so much about spirituality. It's so much about your emotional well-being. You know, when you have a certain spiritual practice, for instance, that can be so incredibly healing and so incredibly rewarding for you and can help you feel so, so much more settled within yourself. And maybe that even helps ease a bit of the anxiety or a bit of the stress and worry uh, to do with the financial stuff too. Okay, so we're moving on to Scorpio now. Uh, um okay Scorpio right so this is your full moon of course welcome it in all of its glory it's happening in your sign all right ha huh. full moon in your first house strength and power of course really going into that of your path your life path your direction your aims, your goals, self-discovery, these, these areas are all are all highlighted. Self-identity. So, well, this could very well be a time of renewal for you, a time of, hey, I've outgrown, I've outgrown that path, I've outgrown that trajectory. It's not really something that I feel that connected with anymore or it could be that there are real shifts to do with your very identity and how your identity is tied in with others how that's tied in with relationships and housing and your job and your career right this could be quite a pivotal moment for you especially when we think about how you know, well, if we think about where we're coming from and we think about 
the solar eclipse happening, you know, which happened on the 8th of April, that was in your sixth house. And so Aries as well is Mars ruled. And I wonder, you know, is it that you can sense that things are really about to change for you in regard to your work, your services, your craft, right? These types of areas. And I think as well, this is on, this is about you letting go of a certain unconscious drive or being able to see what is holding you back here regarding your unconscious drives and habits to do with how it is that you act, how it is that you assert yourself. You are the sign that is so much about self-mastery. You're a sign that, you know, time and time again, you surprise others, you shock others with your resilience, with your ability to overcome pretty much anything in life. Um, this does not necessarily mean, you know, that you make the best of decisions. Um, of course, um, I mean, for many Scorpios, you can get yourself into rather dangerous situations in life but but still you have this way about you of making like a, a long-lasting impression on others right with your intensity with your passion with your ability to overcome you're the sign that is willing to push boundaries <laughs> and you you inspire others. It's you that inspires other people to change. This may not be in a conscious way or in a direct way, but it's almost as if, you know, you coming into other people's lives, you have this way of encouraging other people to transform their lives. And it's interesting because, you know, it makes me think about how each of the signs show up in our life for a purpose, for a reason. I think that's often said about friends, isn't it? You know, some friends are come into your life and they're there for, for life or they're in it for a reason, they're in it for a season, I think along those lines. So I wonder, you know, about the signs and whenever we do meet certain people with particular placements, you know, what is it that they're trying to teach us? You know, why did they sort of enter our lives? What was that reason? And yeah, I just think about that sometimes. But for you, Scorpio, yeah, you come into other people's lives and you really encourage them to be the better, best versions of themselves. <laughs> right? I mean, if people try to mess with you, toy with you, get one over on you, you're very quick to be like, hey, 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 hold on, hold on. And, you know, let's let's not play that game. Um, so for you, there's an energetic shift happening. And I think a lot of it has to do with what you want, right? Your aims, your goals, all these first house matters. How you present yourself in this way to the world Um your demeanor, just how you carry yourself. I mean, you, Scorpio, the way you carry yourself now is going to be so different to how you do it in a year's time and then the year after that. And then, the year, you know, you're always transforming. You're always shifting in this way, like a snake, right? The snake sheds its skin and it, you know, it repeatedly, it outgrows, it outgrows its old skin. Like this is you, you outgrow old versions of yourself. So this is a full moon I feel that's going to bring a lot of clarity to this stuff. And at the same time, these matters are related to intentions that were set October, 2022. So there was that eclipse in your sign. Venus was also there in your sign. So there could have been something very attractive, very beautiful, or very compelling about you, very seductive. There could be strong, um, connections there to your financial position and things like this yeah phoenix moments phoenix moments i think many scorpios you know there seems to be 
a new trajectory to do with your finances in this way especially because we see that there's that energy in the seventh house but and in Taurus by the way okay so the last thing I want to mention is Mars so Mars is in the fifth house so with Mars then being the dispositor of the full moon I can't help but think that the ways in which you have outgrown previous versions of yourself the ways in which you have transformed so much they are then linked to that of your hobbies your creativity your romantic relationships <laughs> right attitudes towards children um, the relationship that you have with your children if you do have any right this could be where many Scorpios by becoming a parent you know following the eclipse of October 2022 oh my goodness you're a whole new version of yourself and I know to be fair I mean that's often said about parenthood you know when you become a parent it's like the old life that the old way that you were before that is it's 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 sort of like a past, a previous version of yourself. But yeah, maybe these are sort of spiritual truths and lessons that you've been sort of integrating or learning. Okay, so Sagittarius. Sagittarius. So we see here that the full moon, okay, the full moon is happening in your 12th house. This okay this is a it's a pretty emotionally charged full moon for you with it being in the 12th and especially because mars the dispositor is in pisces in your fourth okay i would even say with this the importance of having a spiritual practice if that is you know that you consider yourself to be spiritual and even you know if not I would recommend then relaxation rest trying not to jump to conclusions because the thing about this full moon I think in your 12th is that there could be a lot energetically and psychologically that's being brought up that's coming to the surface and there could be power struggles in this then there could be even a necessity to go behind the scenes and to not step into any sort of mm, pettiness or power plays that are going on um even to think about it through a lens of the sixth house as well a little bit those power plays could be present within work relationships or it could be more so about employers right employees colleagues this type of stuff or it could be you know that your health is really sort of tapping on your shoulder so to speak and it's saying hey you need to be aware of this alert alert like pay attention to your body pay attention to what you're doing right now I just think for many Sagittarians you know we we think about it the opposite way so we said about with Gemini having so much above the horizon Sagittarians have so much below the horizon right now and that could be where there's just so much within your private space right now there's so much within your family life there's just so much that is happening underneath the surface and at the same time it's like you need to put on a brave face you need to you need to be there in front of the public you need to be in that sphere right it's like show up do the stuff do the work blah 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 you gotta go to work you know you gotta do all these other things um that require you to really really just be out of be out of the home and and not be so in, in introspective in this way um so it's almost as if there's just a lot that's going on a lot of emotional stuff that's coming up I feel for many Sagittarians and I think the strength and power of the full moon will further add to this to me to me what I'm getting from this is you reaching a breaking point and I'm not saying this to be negative or fearful. I'm, I'm not doing that. 
I'm saying this more so from a place of emotional wellness. I'm saying this from a place of, hey, you may just get to a point where you're like, my cups are full. Like, they're full. Like, I'm done. I, I've, I've, there's, there's, there's too much. I need, I need to let this go. I need to release this. I, you know, um, yeah, you could just have a lot on your plate right now. Um, and so the full moon could be that time of just this very cleansing, very therapeutic, like, I need to get this out. And that could be a thing, you know, to recognize what calms you, what can help you regulate, what can soothe you a little bit, just to release, release, as I was saying earlier, release the bad juju. <laughs> okay. And hey, you know, this stuff could also be linked to family relationships, right? Certain family relationships and dynamics that are just weighing on you. And you're like, oh my gosh, this, when's this going to end? You know, just sort of being caught up in this repetitive cycle. And it can feel like, oh, I'm just being whirled around in this and there's no control I have in this. But what I, of course, want to remind you of, and you know this, you know this deep, deep within, even if it is that you feel clouded right now or coming up to the full moon. But times change, right? The tides turn. Okay. And I especially think it's interesting when your chart ruler, which is Jupiter, moves into Gemini around the end of May. Oh, oh. Should be it should be interesting, I think, for Sagittarians. Um coming toward the end of May because I think this will highlight new opportunities to do with relationships and socializing and maybe feeling more of a readiness to want to engage a bit more and to maybe find some more of a healthy balance healthy give and take when it comes to relating right okay so what I then want to further well, lastly, what I want to mention is that the stuff I said about to do with the full moon being in Scorpio, that is linked to intentions that you set October 2022. So there was the eclipse in Scorpio October 2022. So there could have been new beginnings and you start to do with your spiritual values. Even, hey, spiritual gifts show up within the 12th house, certain hidden talents, hidden gifts that we have. So a lot of this can be tied to that of investigation, research, this type of stuff. So this is a full moon that could very well illuminate these things, right? This could be, you know, to look at this um, in this way, there could be a, something clear, greater clarity about what your hidden gifts are. And there could be even a great deal of feeling empowered, feeling empowered by how much you have grown behind the scenes. It's interesting just to finish this off, you know, Sagittarians, you are certainly a sign that you change and you grow old versions of yourself. But a lot of this happens outside of the public eye. <laughs> You're like, okay, I'm just going to take the exit door here. I'm just going to go out the back. Phew. And then you go behind the scenes and you do all those things on your own or away from the public, basically. And then you come out anew and you're like, hey, <laughs> I'm glowing. Did you miss me? <laughs> anyway, so that's Sagittarius. So let's move on to Capricorn next. Capricorn. All right, Capricorn. Okay, so the full moon is happening in your 11th house, Capricorn. So there seems to be a lot of strength and power that is going into your, well, let's go with, let's go with your collective aims, social aims. So we think about the 11th house and how the 11th house can be so much about Whenever we band together with a group of people, what is the common goal? What is the collective aim? You know, what are we all fighting for or pushing for? What do we all want? 
So for you, Capricorn, you're the types of people who get involved <laughs> in, I mean, a radical change if need be. <laughs> you're the type of sign that is willing to, to join the, the group that can go to extremes, that can really push for change and demand it actually. You may find yourself in these sort of social situations where it is about empowerment. It's about, okay, we're all here together and we're all wanting to like fight for this cause and change how society is, right? But even to think about it in terms of friendships, in terms of teams and community, right? So people coming together within a like-minded community, right? The 11th house is so much about people who are like-minded to us, but at the same time, how we can challenge people. <laughs> we can challenge the status quo. But for you, Capricorn, you may run in social circles, uh, communities where, you know, there's some esoteric stuff going on. It's quite witchy. It's quite paranormal. There's mystery in it, right? Um, maybe it's secretive, right? It's a very like secretive group and people don't know that you're a part of it, right? So all of this stuff. So I say all of this because the full moon is coming along and it's illuminating a lot of this. It's highlighting, okay, what, what have you outgrown? Who have you outgrown within friendships? Which sort of unconscious habits are holding you back within friendships from experiencing greater emotional empowerment? Yes, Michael, you're saying about revolution, secret, yes, S-O-Y, <laughs> yes, I see that. So yeah, for you, Capricorn, I just think what's coming through for me is getting out of your own way, but also recognizing who you can trust, who is honest, who is true, who can you really trust, who can you really rely on within friendships and communities and which people do you feel more of a, an emotional bond with who can you be vulnerable with who can you open up to these things then are linked to that of the solar eclipse that happened October 2022 so you could have set new intentions around that time you know to do with communities and groups and teams and you were like oh you know I really want to be a part of a group I want to be a part of a community I want to be around like-minded people where we come together and we discuss or um, we all push for a certain change or we wish to grow as, as a, a team these types of things right so whilst you may have been at the beginning stages back then well, now we're coming up to the full moon in Scorpio and there's reward, there's clarity, there's, oh my gosh, right, okay, I can see this. And maybe even just feeling uh, really powerful emotions. And hey, the thing about the moon in Scorpio energy is that when it comes to any emotion, they can be intensified. So those emotions, of course, could be anger, and for, you know, the, the upset feelings and emotions and sadness and everything to do with Moon and Scorpio. But these emotions can also be about excitement and passion. And I feel so happy, right? You know, I feel so happy here. I feel so overjoyed. <laughs> Moon and Scorpio people can be so, oh, so overjoyed with, with happiness. But it's whenever you feel, when you feel that genuine connection with others. So all of this is to say, Capricorn, that this is a full moon that's going to illuminate these types of, these feelings, these qualities within friendships. And you could be feeling these qualities from others, right? It could be like a, a real trusting attitude that comes from a grip. It could be 
feeling safe, right? Feeling safe and supported within a safe space, for instance. Then we also see that Mars is in Pisces in the third house. So this full moon then also has something to say about communicating with courage and being brave enough to say the thing that other people may be a little bit too hesitant to say. Or maybe there's something here about you in a subconscious way, pushing other people to speak up, pushing them to sort of lead, if you will. There could also be something pretty emotionally charging about siblings and your cousins and feeling that sort of emotional connection and wanting to experience a greater bond. Right, so Aquarius, we're moving on to you now. Aquarius. All right, so this full moon is happening in your 10th house. So there's a lot of strength and power that is being put into that of, well, let's think about the 10th house, achievement, accomplishment. Thank you, Michael. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you for commenting as well. Um, I hope you uh, find it to be helpful. So yes, a lot that's going into achievement, accomplishment, and how your achievements and your accomplishments, Aquarius, are so much about investigation and <laughs> research and digging deep, really digging your teeth into certain areas and wanting to like pull to extract as much sort of information to to bring it to the surface, to expose people, to bring the, the truth to light. You know, Aquarians, you tend to um, be, to, to possess these very strong, uh, let's say, these strong beliefs about how matters in the world should be changed. <laughs> let's put it that way. You can have these very strong, strong beliefs and and feelings. And so I think that what you tend to become known for in this life is your passion, is how tenacious you can be, how stubborn you can be, how set in your ways you can be, but at the same time, how these things are also, <laughs> they can be a part of your par, okay? Because your fixed views, they can in a way assist you when it comes to, okay, I'm saying this with conviction. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. And I admit that I could be, but I am holding on to this truth because I feel it so strongly in my bones, right? It carries a lot of weight. So there could be here a major energetic shift when it comes to these attitudes and when it comes to being recognized as this person, perhaps, <laughs> within, within the public sphere. You know, you're the types of people who you can be very uh, private, let's say, private about your own personal feelings, but yet so quick and so firm about any sort of injustices or deceit or deception that's happening. So perhaps this is a full moon that's going to bring a lot of this stuff to light. And you're, you're going to even address any unconscious habits that are holding you back from really, well, stepping into your power regarding the public, regarding the, the space that you, you have within the public sphere. I think that Aquarians, you really, you have such a strong dedication and determination to leave your legacy, right? To sort of be known for something, to, but it's, 
not necessarily about you let's just say it's it's more about what you're doing it's more about the the impacts that you what you're doing has on the rest of humanity you know you have your own sort of views about how you see things and how you wish them to change so yeah I think this could be a full moon that really illuminates a lot of this for you Kayla you said that you've got an Aquarius rising so I hope I hope that you benefit from this reading but what I also want to mention then of course is that this stuff is tied to a, an eclipse that happened in Scorpio so this was October 2022 so maybe think back and is there anything that you started back then you know to do with perhaps bringing your investigations bringing your research to the public it's interesting I think as well because you tend to showcase like publicly you know this is the 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 evidence these are the receipts this is the investigation I've been doing and you know the data whatever have you I, I think you can be quite forthcoming with with this type of stuff um so perhaps there was something that you started back then that when you look back you're like oh you know things have really started to unfold and the energy picked up and so this is a full moon that's going to be oh, okay things are becoming clear oh I can see that more vividly I can see how my own sort of unconscious has shifted and changed over the years or how much I've stepped up and proven myself for example how much I've transformed within the public sphere that's another interesting thing about you you do you transform a great deal right in front of the public <laughs> in front of their eyes they're like looking at you in one way one um day and then a year later it's like oh my gosh you've really changed you wow you've you've changed your hair you've changed your sort of way of coming across like wow the way you glow that there's just something about you I can't quite put my finger on it wow but you've really changed right it's this type of stuff <laughs> it's interesting but the last thing I want to mention is that Mars which is the dispositor of the full moon, that's in Pisces. So the sort of public transformations that are unfolding here and the, the releasing and the shedding and the rewards and the clarity and everything else to do with your reputation and the public and your achievements and everything, they are then linked to that of your finances, <laughs> your, <laughs> your physical security your earnings, your skills, your talents, right? With Pisces in the second house, I think you tend to be quite skilled at using your intuition, quite skilled within spiritual areas, right? So there could be this sort of leadership position that you are in at the minute or that you feel you're, you're seeking to be a leader. You're seeking to really get things moving a bit here um, within these sort of areas and how, thinking about how you can develop your skills further. So Pisces, Kayla, you said, uh, you, you were recognized at work for your hard work. Ah, awesome. You received a promotion. Well, that's awesome. Congratulations to you. That's so cool love it love it okay so Pisces lastly Pisces so for you Pisces this full moon is happening in your ninth house so this means that there is a lot of strength and power going into that of well <laughs> things like teaching publishing broadcasting it's certainly an interesting one because Pisces you become such a powerhouse <laughs> that's a big word for Scorpio actually powerhouse so wherever Scorpio is it can show us where we can be like this but for you Pisces 
certainly you can be such a powerhouse when it comes to what you share with the world because what you share (laughs) comes from a very deep introspective place from the depths of your soul if you will uh from the depths of your mind um what you deliver what you broadcast what you publish it's something that you know well these are things that you become really very much um transformed through and you I do yourself time and time again you push boundaries you're willing to push boundaries and you're also really willing to address those hidden truths the hidden stuff it yeah because it's like whilst many people may not access certain um cornerstones or hidden areas because they're dark they're secluded they can't see them Pisces you live in the dark (laughs) you know when um how do we say you know whenever you you're in a, a room and the light's on and you turn the light off and it's so dark and you can't see anything but if you give it some time and you allow your eyes to adjust then you can see in the dark this is what I kind of think about because it's you Pisces that lives in that space I even think about how Pisces you can be such night owls Pisces you tend to go to sleep later get up later (laughs) um yeah you may thrive in the night of course this isn't going to be the case for every Piscean but my point being is because Pisces is the sign that is so much about this you know this this having this dark quality this ability to just to feel to sense things to tap into the unknown right into other sort of realms and dimensions <laughs> so that's what I mean you know by by the, the dark if you will so to bring it back to Scorpio you are able to access those more hidden darker areas and then extract something from them and bring it's like you bring that knowledge right you bring those truths and you shine that light you know you bring you bring the light then to to the collective you bring your truths your messages to to the collective so this is a full moon where i think these areas are really gonna be felt and you're going to experience a renewal a release a breakthrough you could also possibly look at any unconscious habits that are holding you back from even recognizing the sort of the the power and the strength that goes into these areas for instance or unconscious habits to do with any sort of self-sabotage or um times whenever you know you can get caught up in very overwhelming emotions that can sort of bring you under and you can be like this uh, you know Pisces you can you can you can experience these these periods when you need you need to to get away and I think I think especially whenever you're younger it's a challenge for you you know I think that when you're younger those heavier emotions can it can feel like you're drowning it can really feel like you're drowning in them but as you do mature and as you grow older you learn how to work with this and you learn as well ah hey you know I don't want to be around that person because I feel mm, you know you feel the vibes right you can pick up on those that's the thing that the vibes the any weird stuff coming from other people and then what you can do is you can go up ah, I'm redirecting my energy and I'm going over here 
So very, very sensitive to stuff like that. Therefore, with the moon being in Scorpio, especially because Mars is also in your first house, <laughs> uh, let's just say that you are going to recognize very strongly what it is that you need, what it is that you need energetically. And any renewals that you'll go through will be felt strongly. Um, and again, I can't help but think that such matters, okay, they're linked to that of sp like spreading your wings, freeing yourself, venturing off, right? Having this, no, I'm done with this. It's this, this energetic shift to do with travel, right? Sort of getting away from any unhealthy, toxic, you know, emotional um, leeching. This one, we're like a, an emotional leech <laughs> um, quality that that's, yeah, that's what I'm getting from this. And possibly as well, traveling in a spiritual way and healing could be a big part of this. Your own sort of healing journey could be emphasized around this full moon and naturally the thing about it is this full moon is strongly linked to the solar eclipse that happened in Scorpio that was October 2022 so since then can you maybe think about what has been unfolding for you over the past year and a half or so you know to do with advanced training, to do with higher education, publishing, all these types of things that I just mentioned and, and those transformations you've went through, but also the travel stuff. And I also think that with Mars being in Pisces in the first house, this full moon in Scorpio is also then connected in with your body, your physical body, your, your uh, goals, your aims, your wants, you know, your passions, what drives you, what motivates you. I think this is quite a pivotal time for you when it comes to these areas, Pisces. So yes, I think the full moon is going to provide much spiritual clarity for you. Hello, Kina. Welcome to you. Um, hello, Jennifer as well. Welcome to you. You said you missed the first part. Oh, well, thank you for tuning in. And Kina, thank you for tuning in as well. Welcome back to you. It's good to have you. Um, and Kayla, a good case study is Nicki Minaj. Her career has been to expose the injustices in the music industry. Oh, I did not know that. Interesting. Thank you for sharing that as an example, for sharing uh, Nicki Minaj's chart as an example. Well, everyone, that concludes all of the horoscopes for this upcoming full moon in Scorpio. Best of luck during it. I do just want to mention that if you're interested in signing up to the Patreon, you can do so by going to the link in the description. And if you're interested in signing up to the Aries Rising Workshop, which I do hope to be a group of workshops, um, yes, if you're interested in signing up, you can do so. Um, by going to the link in the description as well. I may even consider having a registration form for all of the signs, um, but we'll see how we go for, uh, to begin with. And thank you for listening, everyone. Thank you for being here. If you did enjoy this uh, session today, you can always buy me a coffee. Of course, no pressure, um, completely up to you. And if you would like to book a reading with me and we can discuss your chart, you can do so by going to hannahselsware.com. Thank you for being here. And yes, he said, thank you for your time the last three hours. Good. I'm so glad to um, have you have you join. And thank you for being here. Um, Pisces moon at 20 degrees. So this moon is going to be at four degrees. So, yeah, I would say in your case, it's not going to be within that range, I suppose, right? I I was saying there about the degrees, more so zero degrees to around about 
12, 14, about, about that. I mean, very maximum 14 degrees um, of Pisces, or sorry, Scorpio and Taurus. You know, you got to think about Leo and Aquarius as well at around those degrees. And then, you know, all the other signs, sextiles and trines. But yeah, 20 degrees is a bit far out then, uh, Jennifer. Anyway, thank you all so much for listening. I appreciate you so much. And I hope you all have hey, have a lovely weekend. Yeah, we're coming uh, Friday tomorrow and then it's the weekend and I'll be back on Sunday. Uh, Taurus season begins tomorrow. So happy Taurus season. Happy birthday to all of you solar Taurians out there. And see you on Sunday because we're going to be talking about the, uh, the Taurus archetype. So that should be good. Thank you again. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Kayla. Thank you, everyone, very much. And have a lovely day.